Welcome back to Avocet Math. In this video, we're going to talk about something called the Chicken McNugget Theorem, which is a uh, useful solution concept for Diophantine equations that's uh, helpful to know for uh, some of the questions that come up in the AIM and the US AMMO level of testing. So let's go ahead and remind ourselves of the prototype uh, example equation that we're dealing with in this uh, video series, 3x plus 7y equals some positive integer n. And for uh, this uh, solution concept, we're interested in solving uh, this Diophantine equation for the uh, x and y that are elements now of uh, non-negative integers. And what we found in a previous video is that when we, const when we constrain the problem to non-negative uh, solutions, we're left with two possible outcome scenarios. One is that we could uh, be left with uh, a scenario where no solutions are available and we could be left with a scenario where we have a finite number of solutions that are available. And normally uh, in the Diophantine problems that we encounter at the AMC level we're given a, a fixed n value on the right side of this equation and we're typically asked to solve for the discrete values of x and y that solve this equation uh, conforming to this constraint. But we'd like to uh, turn that question on its head so to speak and ask the question of what values of n will lead to uh, the case of no solutions and what values of n will lead to the case of finite number of solutions and how can we describe that set of n more concisely. So for this problem to explore that a little further we need to add one additional constraint and the constraint we're going to add is that we're going to consider only Diophantine equations in which the greatest common divisor of the coefficients is equal to 1. And the reason why we make this uh, additional uh, requirement is because if, for example, the greatest common divisor was equal to something greater than 1, say for example 2, and suppose for instance that we have the coefficients of say 4 and 6 to give that greatest common divisor of 2, then we'll notice that for any n that is odd uh, there won't be a solution. So in essence the solution, uh, the set of n which give rise to no solution will be an infinite set. As well, as well as the uh, set of n that give rise to a finite set of solutions. So that's not a very interesting set of n values, but when we constrain the problem for greatest common divisors of only one, then we find we have a more interesting set that's uh, interesting to examine. So let's go ahead and examine what that set of n might look like for this particular equation. And the best way to do that is to just uh, take a look at how the 3x and the 7y term can contribute to different sums uh, of n. And the best way to do that is to just form a table to examine uh, what the 3x term can contribute. In this case, 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Uh, continue this further if necessary. And take a look at what the 7y term can contribute. Can contribute 0, 7, 14, 21. And of course, we have to consider all possible sum combinations 10, 13, 16, 17, 20, 23, 6, 9, 32, uh, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, and we can continue this table further if necessary but I think this captures the behavior that we're trying to examine here. So as I look at this table, I notice that when we're trying to solve for small values of n, we find some definite gaps in coverage uh, for which we cannot find x and y that are positive or, excuse me, non-negative. Uh, but when we try to search for large values of n, it appears as though this table has very good coverage. And as I examine this table, what I notice is that the highest number that we do not have a solution for is the number 11. So that's the highest gap that I notice from this table. Because I notice that uh, if we choose a value of n of 12, we can also achieve a solution for 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 
18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and you sort of notice this fill pattern that has developed, and it's very plausible that this fill pattern will basically satisfy all n uh, large. So essentially, the fill pattern will uh, cover the set of all n uh, greater than or equal to 12. So uh, let's go ahead and describe this behavior a little more concisely. So let's take a look at uh, how solutions are available for x, y greater than or equal to 0 uh, versus the uh, positive n value that we're trying to achieve. And so what we notice from this table is that for the value of 12, for instance, we do have a solution available, so let's put a check mark there. And for 13, we have a solution, and 14. And it appears from the behavior of this table that if we extend this result out to infinity, we'll always have a solution available. And it appears as though there's a line of demarcation just below 12 at which for the value of 11 for n, we do not have a solution available. And then for values below 11, uh, it appears that we have some pattern that uh, has gaps in it, but it's not a pattern that's easily described. And so we have some pattern involving available solutions and non-available solutions for values uh, 10 and lower. Uh, it turns out that uh, this line of demarcation can be described quite easily. Uh, the theory uh, that can be developed uh, a little further than we're going to do in this video shows that this number 12 is given by a very simple formula. It's given by the coefficients 3 and 7, each reduced by 1, and multiplied together. And the number just below it uh, is always a number in which a solution is never available. So this X marks always occurs for the number just below this product that we just calculated. And this number is sometimes called the uh, Frobenius number. You can Google that. And it's a number that comes up in quite a few other types of uh, mathematical contexts. Um, and then for, in general, for numbers below the number just below this number. Uh, we basically, again, have a pattern of available solutions and non-available solutions that's difficult to describe in the general case. So here we have a very interesting behavior that often comes about from these types of Diophantine equations. And it's a behavior that uh, you need to be aware of because it sometimes crops into uh, uh, to some of the AMC and AIM level type problems that you're going to uh, run into. And uh, I'll leave it for you to uh, Google Chicken McNugget Theorem and uh, see how this theoretical framework is used to compute uh, what types of Chicken McNugget orders you could and could not order uh, back in the 1980s. So check that out, and we'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.